SeaWorld is cutting 350 positions across the company's parks. The company has reported a decline in attendance since the 2013 documentary Blackfish came out. The film, which shone a light on SeaWorld's treatment of killer whales, SeaWorld said last year it would no longer breed orcas in captivity and stop using them in shows. A spokesperson told CBS News that most of the positions are at corporate headquarters and its parks in Orlando and San Diego. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is dying. Scientists say climate change, fueled by our reliance on petroleum and coal, has caused ocean temperatures to rise, leading to the bleaching and death of coral. In 2016 alone, 29 percent of shallow water coral was lost. And while scientists say they know why it's dying, they don't know how to stop it. That's why they're turning to technology to help save one of the world's greatest natural wonders. CNET senior editor Claire Riley is in Sydney. She's out with a new special report detailing the efforts to save the Great Barrier Reef. Claire, welcome. Thank you for having me. So how serious is this problem? Can you tell us more about the damage to the reef? Look, it's, um, it's pretty serious because there's been so many different factors that have kind of worked together to damage the reef from multiple angles. So you mentioned climate change there. Our reliance on fossil fuels is a known cause of climate change and it's seen ocean temperatures rise quite significantly. Um, you know, a couple of degrees when you're sitting in the bath doesn't feel like a lot, but a couple of degrees for these really fragile ocean systems is is incredibly damaging. Um, couple that with, you know, climate change causing things like cyclones hitting the reef, which are tearing up beds of coral and in reefs of coral. Then you have dredging and agriculture, so agricultural runoff um, causing sediment in the water that stops coral being able to get sunlight and dredging for large ships to be able to come through to deliver to ports. So it's all of these different angles kind of attacking the reef at once, but obviously climate change is a really, really significant one. Well, your report details back-to-back -back bleaching events. Can you talk about that? So bleaching, uh, people might have seen images of uh, coral around the world turn kind of skeletal white. And what happens is coral is essentially a kind of this skeletal form, but it's got tiny little algae living inside that give it its colour and its life and they help to feed it. But when temperatures rise, the algae can't cope and so they expel themselves, uh, which causes the coral to die. And we've seen, as you mentioned, about 29% of shallow water corals just bleached and killed off in the reef within the space of a couple of short years. So normally when temperatures rise, we have the ability for corals to maybe bleach, but then they can recover. But we've had back-to-back -back bleaching events because we've had back-to-back -back years of unsustainable uh, ocean temperature rises, which has killed the reef and not allowed it time to recover. And then you add in the factors like cyclones and we're losing huge sections of the reef and they're just not growing back and they're just not able to recover. Well, 30 miles west of the reef in Townsville, Australia, scientists are simulating the conditions that are causing this. What are they hoping to accomplish? It's, um, it's pretty amazing. They've got this massive sea simulator, gallons and millions of gallons of water going in there every day that they pump in from the ocean. And what they've done is they've recreated these kind of miniature reefs in tanks and labs. If you imagine a kind of an aquarium, you might be testing one coral or the impacts of climate change on one fish, but they've created mini ecosystems of a whole bunch of organisms living together. Mm. And they can fine tune the conditions in these reefs to simulate conditions that we're expecting in the year 2100. So with greater carbon dioxide in the water from global warming, increased water temperatures, they can fine tune that to 0 0.1 degrees, or they can say, they can program this central brain of this sea simulator to say, all right, we want to mimic the reef at 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, this much sediment in the water, this much sunlight, this temperature, and see what happens to the coral and the fish and the sponges and all those organisms living in that one ecosystem. It's incredibly brilliant. It's world leading research and it's just next to the reef. It's really amazing. Wow, yeah, that sounds incredible. Anyone who has a saltwater aquarium knows how difficult just the chemistry of that is. Now you have this massive ocean simulation, incredible. Well, part of these efforts to save the reef include creating 3D simulations of complex coral networks. How are these reproductions supposed to help? 
So essentially a really big part of this is education. So especially there in the US, a lot of people will have heard about the Great Barrier Reef, they've seen Finding Nemo, but they don't actually know what the really complex architecture of a piece of coral really looks like. So what photographers do, so there's a group in the US called the Hydras. Um, I think you're showing some of their models right now. Okay. There's also groups at Sydney University working on similar technology. Um, they go down and they take really, really detailed photographs of coral and large sections of the reef. And then they come back onto land and they stitch them together in 3D software and they create these beautiful 3D renders. And what they're able to do is use that for things like education and to show people what we stand to lose. But they're also able to track small details like erosion of coral and the growth over time. So if they photograph the same part, they can then turn it into 3D when they're on dry land. They don't have to worry about the air running out in their tank while they're researching and they can look at comparisons whilst also kind of showing people this is what we stand to lose and this is what is out there on the reef. Hmm. Well, architects are also working on building an artificial reef in a more hospitable location. How would that work? This is a bit of a this is a bit of a way out idea. So, and it, it's been discussed by scientists and architects. But I spoke to one architect in Sydney, um, and he wants to build a Sydney Barrier Reef. So, essentially, sculling, uh, scuttling. Um, oil rigs off the coast of Australia, creating a kind of a physical architecture for coral to grow on. So they can implant coral and it grows as the water temperatures become warmer further south. It's, it's a bit of a crazy solution, but a lot of scientists are saying climate change is so significant now that we have to kind of turn to some of these crazier solutions to be able to, to work something out. Other scientists are saying, well, look, you can't just replant coral, even if you use things like the sea simulator in Townsville to work out different kinds of heat resistant coral, which is what they're doing. Um, you can't just replant a whole reef worth of coral. This is a reef the size of Germany, you know, it's mm -hmm. a living, growing organism. You can't replant that. That's like trying to replant the Amazon. So mm -hmm. there are some way out ideas like this, but whether or not they work, there's other solutions that we need to look to. Well, so tell Tell us then more about researchers' project to artificially brighten clouds. Talk about an unconventional solution, potentially. How would that help? Yeah, it sounds a bit like a James Bond weather machine <laughs> in my mind, but um, it's essentially the idea that you kind of spray or inject salt into clouds, and if it's fine enough, it can stay up in the water vapor up there, and then that actually brightens the clouds to help reflect temperatures and keep water temperatures cooler. So by reflecting sunlight, you take the pressure off the water below and you help to lower temperatures. Scientists in Sydney say that it could buy us at least 20 or 30 years of temperature changes on the reef. Um, and it's a really brilliant and intelligent way of using science and technology. They sort of go out with these, I guess, these salt cannons and they spray them up into the sky. But, you know, it's one of those, another one of those kind of wacky ideas that scientists have said, well, previously this would have sounded a little insane, but now we're looking at those sorts of things as really being viable options because the desperation is so so there. Yeah, well, there's a great debate over climate change and the causes of it, but we see uh, really sobering images there that you brought us. Claire Riley, thanks so much, Claire. Thank you.